All right, good morning. Welcome to Oasis Spiritual Center for Divine Living. I am Asar, also known as Greg, your host. Today I am recording from Detroit Motor City, Detroit, Missouri. I've been here all weekend for the conference that has to do one with One Africa. I just had some great conversation with great people from all across the country. Um, had the opportunity to engage some of our seniors in the movement, in the conscious movement, um, Dr. Leonard Jeffries um, and his lovely wife. We, I had the opportunity to um, hear from them and also to sit with them and chat with them. In Fidishi, many of you, you may know him. He leads the conversation as it relates to the Medinetor. Um, and so I got to uh, engage him even on last night. He, uh, we had a tour of the museum here in Detroit that has the Tutankhamun um, exhibit. And he and Jabari, many of you may know Jabari, also is very um, comedically uh, astute brother. They led us around the museum and just gave us some golden nuggets that you won't pick up from reading any book on Egyptology and just the ability to dialogue with those individuals. So I had a great time. So we're gonna be here another day, uh, wrapping it up today and then be off, um, headed back to, to St. Louis. I was about to say Chicago, I don't live in Chicago anymore, headed back to St. Louis. So it was a great trip up and everything's going well. Well, I'm so appreciative that you have taken time to join me this morning. Um, those of you who have taken this opportunity to come onto the platform, you should have gotten an email this morning if you are in my mailing list. And if you haven't gotten an email, that means you're not in the mailing list. Now, if you're on my YouTube side of the house this morning, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There it is right down there. Hit the subscribe button. And once you hit the subscribe button, that will automatically ensure that you are notified whenever I'm going live. In addition to hitting that subscribe button, I encourage you to look up in the description. And if you click there, you will see there's an opportunity for you to join the mailing list. So you join the mailing list, that makes sure that you get communication from me, handouts from me, all types of um, uh, information that brings value to you. So just a little housekeeping thing. So let us move into this morning's teaching. Um, the teaching is entitled Seven Divine Distinctives. Seven Divine Distinctives that Lead to a Winning Life. Yes, Seven Divine Distinctives that Lead to a Winning Life. All right, how many of you guys want to win in life? Well, I've stated and I believe the mastery of life should not be left to chance, but instead to a strategy. That's right of deliberate and intentional moves. So you should have a strategy um, that leads to deliberate, you got deliberate and intentional moves that these moves are, are such that they set you up for wins. And that's what I wanna talk about this morning, setting your life up in order that you may have a winning life. You don't have to go through life as a victim. Uh, you wanna go through life as a participant. You don't want to be inside of a default. You wanna be definitely an individual who are making things happen in their lives. And that, that's important to me. Uh, as a spiritual life coach, uh, a facilitator in this conversation, I'm always encouraging individuals to get on the stage and, and to live their best life. So I'm appreciative this morning that you have taken time to rise and join me in this brief presentation to you this morning. Okay, let us jump right into today's teachings. Um, I'm going to cover three things. I'm going to cover the power of a distinctive. Um, we're going to look at what is a distinctive. And then we're going to talk about seven distinctives that, if practiced, lead to a masterful life. What is a masterful life? A masterful life is the one that, when contrast shows up in your life, you're able to uh, confront it deal with it and adjust it accordingly. Now I say accordingly because some things that show up in your life is just the season for you to be inside of that thing. Don't always try to uh, extinguish the contrast that show up in your life. First thing when you have contrast, make it your business to say, okay, why is this showing up in my life at this present moment? What is this showing to me? Is Am I here to get a lesson from this or am I part of a bigger scheme of things? This contracts 
contrast that is uh, manifesting in my life is for a lesson for someone else. And so I'm going to circle back to that a little later. And then we're going to wrap up with how, how to get started. I like to start our teachings here at Oasis Spiritual Center for Divine Living using some wisdom teaching, uh, wisdom principle. And most of my wisdom principles I get right out of that source document known as the Bible. No, I usually notice I didn't call it the Holy Bible. It's the Bible. It's a wisdom book. And this morning in my meditation, I was in Psalms, the 37th division of Psalms, verse 23 and 25. And it reads the steps of a good person. No, I know it says man, but I'm making space for male and females. The steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. And we know the word Lord means law. So it reads the steps of, the, of a good person are ordered by the universal laws and principles. And we a good person, delights in the ways of them. Though this good person may fall, this person shall rise and not utterly be cast down. For the universal principles upholdeth him or her with its hand. The word says in verse 25, I have, I have been young, I can definitely say that, and now I am older, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed begging bread. That's a powerful scripture. Psalms 37, 23 to 25. It has a lot of meat in there. I've never seen one who is righteous. Okay. Never seen it. Even myself, I've never seen them forsaken. When you work the principles, the principles work. Neither have I ever had to beg bread. And those who I know that are righteous never have to beg bread. For whatever you need has a way of getting to you oftentimes before you ask. Why do I say that? Because there's a scripture that says that God desires to do, source desires to do, nature desires to do, nature desires to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you could ask or think. So why even ask when you know that you live in a universe that conspires or that works with you, has your best interest in mind? You don't have to worry about the minute details. You all we think you have to know that when there's a, dem a demand put out there, it will come to you. All right. Somebody said they were awakened this morning. That's Courtney. She was awakened with that scripture. I guess we all, there's only one, there's one faith, one Lord, one baptism, meaning the, the oneness of source, the same source, the same God that is in me is the same God that is in you. We are all on the same vibrational frequency because we hooked up to the same source. Now, I believe in possibility. As the facilitator of Oasis Spiritual Center for Divine Living, I believe in possibility. I believe that we are stronger than we know we are. I, know, I believe that we are more powerful than we have been taught to believe. If we're like the little engine, you, you ever heard the story? There was a story about a little engine, a little railroad engine was employed about a station or in a yard for such work as it was built for. It was pulling a few cars on and off the switches, off the tracks. One morning, it was waiting for the next call when a long train of freight cars asked a large engine in the roundhouse to take it over the hill. And the response was, I can't. That is too much. A, uh, too much of a pull for me. This is one of the larger engines said that, um, that it was just too much work. Then the train asked another engine and another only to hear excuses and be refused. In desperation, the train asked the little switch engine to draw it up the grade and down on the other side. And the engine said, the little engine said, I think I can puffed the little locomotive and put itself in front of the great heavy train. As it went on, the little engine kept bravely pulling faster and faster. And as it went, you could hear the mantra, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. As it neared the top of the grade, which had so discouraged the larger engines, it went more slowly. However, it still kept saying, I 
think I can. I think I can. It reached the top by drawing on bravery and then went down the grade, congratulating itself by saying, I thought I could. I thought I could. So I believe we have the capacity, you and I, everyone who was on this feed this morning, we have the capacity to do, be, or have anything that we desire to be, do, or have once we embrace the possibility of such and go about the work. There it is. We must go about the work of living towards our intentions. Then and only then can we experience sources, gods, divine intelligence, highest and greatest good for each of us. That is so important. So why don't you affirm with me this morning as we get ready to go up this grade and get to the top and coast down. I want you to affirm with me. I'll state it once and then we're going to state it together twice. And the affirmation will go like this. I am manifesting the ultimate life expression. And so it is. Now together, I am manifesting the ultimate life expression. And so it is. I am manifesting the ultimate life expression. And so it is. Now, how does that feel? To know that you are manifesting the ultimate life expression. That's beautiful. So we want to look at, it's one thing to affirm something, but it's another thing to affirm the things that you're taking proper action steps to collaborate with what you are affirming. So I have seven distinctions or the seven distinctives that I share with individuals in this ministry. And these distinctives, if employed in your life, will give you the ability to master any situation, any circumstance that comes about in your life. Now, the, what is a, distinct, a distinctive? A distinctive is a characteristic or of, or, or, or of a person or a thing and serving to distinguish it from others. A distinctive makes you stand out. A distinctive if so, is something that helps the mm. uncommon, I mean, the common do uncommon things. The, a distinction or a, dis, a distinctive can give you distinction. A dis, distinctive properly employed will make you peculiar. And peculiar applies to qualities possessed only by a peculiar individual or a particular individual or a class of kind that stressed a rarity or a uniqueness. And we must know that we're called, we are called to be a peculiar people. We are called to be the light on the hill. We are called to be um, not just mere men and women. We're called to be divine spiritual beings, not just spiritual beings, because we all are spiritual beings, but we are divine spiritual beings having a human experience. And I like to say we are divine spiritual beings mastering this thing called life. And so I encourage you to grab hold to this, these seven distinctions that I'm going to, or distinctives that I will be giving you that you can take them on as guiding principles. Now, the first one, the first distinction or distinctive that I want you to kind of um, consider taking on in your life is always starting with an attitude of gratitude. And basically what that says is to always at all times show appreciation. What does that mean? Recognize that all things and experiences have value to you. How can I substantiate that with a scripture? The word says all things work together for the good, not to your bad. Everything works together for your good. It says all things work together for the good of those who love the law. I know it says Lord who loves the law and are called according or live in alignment with their purposes. Now, just having that attitude of gratitude, you, you always find something, no matter what state you're in. The word says, no matter what state you're in, you find contentment. It does not say become complacent. You could be in a place, don't want to stay there, but you learn to be content. 
and you learn to be content as you go through life. Contentment doesn't mean complacent. Contentment does not say, this is just my lot in life. This contentment says, this is a lot I have at this time. What am I to do with it? What lesson am I learning from it? What will it empower me to do at some later date that right now I'm not able to do? So we take on an attitude of gratitude. So one of the things I encourage you to do every day, you should affirm that there are good things in this world, good gifts and benefits that you receive. Something that is you have to be grateful for. So that's one of the distinctives that uh, winning life must incorporate because in, in, a, in the winning life, there are gonna have be situations and circumstances that bring contrast that leads up to the win, but this may be a loss on the way to a win. But you even in a loss, you find gratitude, gratefulness, we recognize and acknowledge that the source of all things first are inside of us and secondly materialize as matter outside of us. So if you can't be grateful in the midst of something that is not so good, what will ultimately happen is your focus on the thing that is not so good will begin to um, grow inside of you. And before you know it, that thing has been magnified. So by having gratitude, you find joy in something. You find peace in something. You find a sense of solace in something that you can appreciate. So, you know, we give thanks for being in position to receive as well as to exercise the power to give. That is, we give thanks that what we have experienced, even though the season is shifting, I give thanks for the season that I've been inside of. And now as I move into this new season, I also make space for this season to bring something into my life worthwhile. So gratitude. The second distinctive is meditative thought. Okay. We must learn to be observant of our thoughts. As the observer and to control what we allow to cultivate in our hearts. We got we to be mindful of our gardens, of our thought. What are we, what are we thinking all the day? Uh, so we got to uh, have the distinctive of meditative thought. When you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about its action, his action. You do not have to tell him where to stand or to go here or there. They will find the, their proper place in alignment with their thinking. So meditative thought. So we spend time in quietude so we can um, come to the place of knowing what are our predominant, predominant thoughts? What thoughts are running through my mind with the frequency in a given day? Um, they say you have um, an astronomical number of thoughts go through your head on a daily basis. But you need to not just these to let, allow these thoughts to free float, but at times you need to, need to take an inventory of what you're thinking. Stinking thinking gives you a stinking life. And so what we understand that what is on the outside is what all is going on in the inside. The word says is not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but what comes out of a man, a man. And we're going to transition into that when we move into this third distinction. But I want you to be clear in this meditative distinction, we have our distinctive, we have to know that we must plant seeds or thoughts that are to be cultivated to maturity via the proper use of our imagination. Now we're going to get into the imagination in some days to come. But the two distinctives that I've brought to your attention this morning is an attitude of gratitude and meditative thought. I start my day every morning. I have a group of individuals that join me. We have a morning meditation. And in this morning meditation, not only do we get the opportunity to have a, um, a, 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 a meditation spread to us, but we go into the silence. And it's in the silence 
where we get quiet and we listen that we may hear what source is saying. And we look not with the natural eyes, but with that intuitive third eye to see all of this happens inside of meditative practice of the meditative thought. Now, the third distinctive that will create a winning life that will allow you to be that divinely designed person that you've been called to be is the distinctive of intentional in speech. Now, the word tells us you can tell a fool. You know how to pick up a fool? By the multitudes of words they speak. Many times you're just talking loud and not saying anything. But the very words we speak are either bringing life into our lives and situations or bringing death into our life or situation. We have to learn how to have gratitude. We have to learn how to speak those things that are not as though they were. So we don't just rehearse what we have going on in our lives. So the third distinctive is intentional in speech. That is, you need to recognize the tongue as the muscle of your will and that what you speak is the callus of what ultimately manifests in your world, okay? So that means we must be deliberate in the words we choose and always committed to standing in our voice and not speaking what serves others, but what is consistent with our convictions and our desires. That is important. Many times we can find ourselves slipping into conversations to be part of the conversation. You have to know that sometimes you need to step away from the conversation because if you are bringing, um, if you begin to speak to a situation, you're bringing truth to power. Now, you got to learn that your words are the framer of your worlds. It's like the abracadabra. It's the magic to making things happen. I Abracadabra means I create as I speak. So if I know I create as I speak, then I need to be intentional when I speak taking great care that our speech aligns in harmony with our thoughts. So there should be a dynamic, dynamic duel. I think and I speak, and I speak what I think because I expect what I think to be spoken that it may be created in the world in which I live. So we must be cautious to ensure this. We do meditative thought, which precedes our words. And that is before we even speak, we breathe. We don't just react, but we always speak with as a response. We are cautious of overly joking or speaking words that may confuse or send the wrong message to your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is a waiter. The subconscious mind only responds to what you tell it. And it doesn't know when you're joking or when you're for real. If you say it, the conscious mind is going to take it to action. What the wise say brings them honor. This is a scripture, Ecclesiastes 10 and 12. It says, what the wise say bring them honor, but fools are destroyed, how? By their own words. That's Ecclesiastes 10 and 12. Many times we are destroyed, we are ensnared by the very words we speak. It's not them, it's us. <laughs> So we are always talking about somebody outside of us doing something to us. But in most cases, someone who is in us is the one thing that's doing things to us. Even when you look at what's going on in the, um, the, the melanated communities, when you see the gun violence, it's not guns that are violence. The violence is in individuals who are um, pulling the trigger. And it's the people who look like us. I've yet to see a Klansman come into the community and kill any of. But I see and hear daily about the number of us who are killing us. So I'm just saying that you gotta watch your inner me. You gotta watch what you're thinking and you gotta watch what you're saying. So that's the third distinction, the distinctive. Now, the first one was the attitude of gratitude. The second distinctive was meditative thought. And the third one was intentional in speech. The fourth one is authenticity, authenticity of being. Yes, the fourth in, 
uh, distinctive that we want to look at is authenticity of being. Now, we need to seek to know and to walk as close to our divine design. Each of us have a divine design. Each of us are uniquely created. We may be equal, but we're not the same. So question is, are you showing up comfortably as yourself and not duplicating or seeking to replicate another human being? Choose this week to be deliberate and to deliberately show up as your divine self, speaking your voice with respect and without compromise. Notice this, we can speak our voice with respect for the space of others having their voice. And if the two agree, we walk together. But if your voice don't agree with my voice, then we go our separate ways. And that's simply as that. You don't have to spend time to convince people to, to stand with you in your truth. You don't have to spend your time um, in the midst of people who have an opposing truth. Get on with your life. Get on with your journey. Get on with being authentic. Stop trying to acculturate. Stop trying to fit in. Stop trying to get in. No, show up and be who you are called to be. Now, this also extends. When we talk about this, you've been, you're choosing to deliberately show up as you've been designed, speaking your voice with respect and without compromise. You don't compromise, okay? This extends beyond your external human attributes. It goes beyond your gender. It goes beyond your color. It goes beyond your ethnicity. Even though I'm a melanated person, I'm a melanated man, I celebrate all that, but my authenticity, uh, my divine design, my divineness goes beyond my external skin, my phenotype is what I was spiritually um, designed to do. Now, the scripture is, is clear on that. The most fulfilling thing you need to know is who you are and what you've been designed to do. So it goes beyond our external human attributes, as I stated, but it's mostly importantly is steeped in this right here, in your spiritual self and assignment that you've come here to complete. You have to know what did you come here to do, be, or have, okay? Always being conscious of the ego, constant attempt to come forward as your authentic self. The ego always tries to fit in. The ego tries to, to um, fit in and be better than, but you may not be called to compete in that arena. Matter of fact, you don't compete at all. You, you're not called to compete. What you've been called to do is authentically you, and there's nobody else who can do it like you. And if you spend your time honing or carving away all the stuff that gets in the way of your authentic being, then you will show up with a light so bright that others will appreciate, and they won't see it as a light of competition, but it's a light of what? A light of compliment. You show up as a compliment to people. You show up not as a comparison, although sometimes people will compare themselves to you because there's something you being, you're your mirror. When they look at you, they see what they could possibly be. But what they always have to know that you can never be another person. You always have to look for your authenticity, your authentic self to show up. Always being conscious that there's only one like you. Now, the fifth distinctive that I want you to take on um, at some point in your life is integrity of purpose. It has to do with purpose. It has to do with your soul path, your soul design. And some people don't even know what their soul path is. They don't know what their soul purpose is. There's a number of ways to find that out. I know in the old church, we would wait around for the prophet to show up, or hopefully somebody will bump into us and say, God says this is what you were created for. But then there are some more um, elaborate things you can do or some, some more intentional things. Like you can talk to someone who is gifted in the craft of astrology or astronomy or understanding the stars, the constellations and how they were aligned with your birth. You can talk to someone who has an, uh, uh, a strong understanding as to 
spiritual numerology or some craft that helps people look at when you were born and what um, what the possibility was, you know, find that person. You know, I do some things. You, know, you go to my website, www solutions s-o-u-l-u-t-i-o-n-s and you can go to the website and i'll leave the link there um, for somebody who just wants to maybe have their cards of destiny looked at we can look at um, what's your purpose in this lifetime so when i talk about integrity of purpose that is to give serious consideration to what your personal purpose or your why for this incarnation for this go around, what is the why of you being here? And to ensure that you, you are acting in support of fulfilling it. That is, you don't, you're not just showing up to occupy space, but you came here with the function. The most fulfilling life is to be obtained through the recognition of the fact that there is, in fact, a plan for you. There is a plan for you or not only is there a plan for you, but you need to know for your human existence. Where do you find this at? Go to the wisdom book. It tells you in Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know. Who is I? It, source, knows the plans that it has for you. So if source knows the plans it has for you, then where's the best place to go to get the plans for you? You go to source. And it would outsource to you what the plans that it has for you. It says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the law, the universal law, the 12 principles law. They have plans for you. They work in concert with you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Source God does not glory in harming you, does not have to harm you. When harm comes to us, in most cases, it's a level of reciprocity. It's a, it's a response of what we have sown. Now, you maybe did not um, do anything wrong, but you sowed seeds that made room for that type of thing to show up in your life. That's why I say be a participant, not a victim in life participate. That is, be deliberate, be intentional on what you want to live. You know, you don't have to live according to the environment around you. Epigenetics says it's the things around you that infect you, that impacts you. So if the things around you can impact you, then you got to understand how much more powerful are the things that are in you. So you have two environments that you have to contend with. The environment that is external to you, that many people are outward focused. And because of being outward focused, those things impact their lives, impact what they think. Or you can go inward focus and you may have an inward thought process that aligns with what you experience on the outside. So the outside has affected the inside. But the, the greatest thing that you can learn to do is to go into the meditative practice to see what source sees. The scripture says that the in the story of Jesus, the Christ, that he did no thing except he saw and heard. And that's the same thing you have to have mastery in life. You move not according to intellect. Now you may use the intellect to pull off what the intuition told you should be doing, but you move according to what you see source in the invisible realm to the visible realm. You hear what you hear in the invisible or in the non-auditory realm, not with the ears, but with that inward ear, and you bring it in to the natural realm. So we have to have integrity of purpose. Now, for the, I know the plans that I have for you, the plans the Lord plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You have a future. I pray that for my children. You know, my, I have children ranging from 31 to 30, yeah, 31 to almost 40. And I, I would pull the hair off my head. If I'm worrying about, I'll be like, Job, let me go do this sacrifice just in case they did something. I don't do that. I say this scripture. Source knows the plans that it has for each one of my children. Source desires to prosper them. I get out the way. I just lead by example. I live according to example. So they can see. I've seen dad low and I see them high, but I know dad is always working the principles. Now, Jeremiah 29, 11, meditate on that this week. 
it says, I want you to know, therefore the identification of your why is essential. Before you go any further this year, you need to identify your why. You need to identify your purpose. Many of us, our why and our purpose has been tied to the drive to be successful on the world's platform, to make money. You didn't come here just to make money. You didn't come here to be successful in the eyes of the world. You have to know what it is that moves you. What are you passionate about? You can turn your passion into pay, not with the intention to turn your passion into pay, but when you intentionally deliver or inside or live inside of your passion, it automatically, once you begin to master the thing you're passionate about, money will be attracted to you. Okay, now it's important that you identify your why. It's essential when pursuing and living a fulfilled life. Many people go through life. I see them all the time in my coaching practice. They are making six figures. They are at the, the zenith of their career path, but they're feeling unfulfilled. And it's terrible when you get to that point at midlife, at 50 and 60, as you have amassed all those things. It says, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose their soul? It ain't talking about going to hell. It's talking about losing the reason you came here. So we got let's 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 recapture. What is my soul path? What is my purpose for being here? Now that's important for everyone. So you can live out the creator's highest and greatest good. Now, even though I say you're living out the creator's highest and greatest good for you, you and the creator are one. You're living out your highest and greatest good. Now, for sake of time, I'm going to push on. The sixth distinctive, and we got one more distinctive after this, is action. So the, the sixth distinct, distinctive is taking action. Now, what kind of action? First, we take action to the service of God or source, action to the service of self. So action to self, action to God and then action society, self, source, society. Say that, self, source, society. Now, making sure that your actions first serve you, your creator, and then society in that order. Self is at the center because a healthy relationship with self, not ego-driven or defined, determines your readiness to interact with others in a healthy manner. You have in, interaction, intra, and then enter. You got to operate with yourself. And if you, it says, love the Lord thy God as thyself. Now, then you are able to give while, you, wait, if you love yourself, you can give of yourself in a healthy way. You're able to give by being open to receive that which others have to offer that will contribute to your growth. Sometimes it's constructive observation. It, people, it's not just people giving you money or it's not, I don't give advice, but I give people um, information enough that they can make a decision as a coach. Now, you got to be open to receive life lessons as well as the possibility that your situation may be just that is giving somebody else an opportunity to see God. And, and so source never shows up, except it shows up in the form of another person. And you may be that other person. That's why the Bible says, be careful. You are entertaining angels unaware. You may be the messenger. You may be the angel that that person is in entertaining. Now, the scripture says, your reflection should be, does my actions, when we talk about this distinctive, distinctive, does my actions serve the highest and greatest good of self, of the universe, and the society at large? That's taking right action. The scripture supports it by looking at the scripture. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of the creator's mercy to Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the universe. This is your true and proper worship. Romans 12 and 1, the abridged version. Your goal is to be a first responder versus reactor. Instead of first reacting, seek to always remain careful, conscientious, 
to respond and not react to people, situations, and events from the place of emotions. Now, when we talk about call to action, we don't call to reaction. Somebody has an urgent situation that will pull you in. What's urgent for them doesn't always mean it's urgent to you. You can still have compassion, but don't be getting pulled into other people's fires. You're not a fireman. Come on. Matter of fact, you don't even like heat. Be careful that your action is always tied to your intentions. Now, the seventh thing that we prepared to wrap up this morning is the seven distinctive that if you employ these distinctives, you will win. Now, the seventh one, accept, allow, and know. Also, that the universe is working with you. It's, it's about reflection. Reflection is a gift called recapitulation. And I do this all the time with my clients. We recapitulate. That is, we go back over the lessons that have been learned. The ability to revisit all that has happened over the week prior to only, okay, so prior to moving forward into the new week, one of your distinctives should be that you look back over the last week. And one of the distinctions it is not just you just look back over the week, but I say every night you should look back over your day. When we talk about the coming forth by day in our comedic um, spiritual science, it talks about the 40, 42 laws of Ma'at or the 42 laws of declaration. At the end of your day, you should look back over your day in reflection of whatever your distinctions are or whatever your, your laws are. I will not lie. And at the end of the day, you ask yourself, did I lie? And if you find yourself lying, you make the adjustments that tomorrow Earth School will give you an opportunity to see if you are mastering the things that are essential to you. So I also say the ability to revisit all that has happened over the week prior only to find that things are always working out for you. So when you look back over your life, you can see things are really working out for me. At the beginning of the day, when I got that news, I was kind of discouraged. I felt somewhat dismayed, but here I am 12 hours later and I say, look at God or look at source. Oh, wow, I couldn't see around that corner. But this is what you can affirm. And I do it all the time. I say things are always working out for me. Even when they don't appear to be working out for me, guess what? Things are working out for me. That's important. So um, it says uh, in Romans 8, even though when things don't appear to be working out for you, it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to its purpose. Romans 8, 28. Okay, it's another way of saying this, learning how to lean into the process of life without being anxious or growing weary is the focus of this seventh distinction, to be at peace, to acceptance, and to allow things to work themselves out in your behalf. These are the seven distinctives or virtues that I encourage each of you, each of those who are partners with the ministry, to take them on. If you want to know these virtues, you can go simply to my website. You can go to oasisspiritualcenter.com and you go about us, what we believe, and you click down and you get these distinctives. Now, we're going to close because I need to get ready to um, be in, in, the, in the space of the conference. So I want to affirm this for you because prosperity is a, a key thing for us at this point in our lives. So I'm going to affirm this prayer of prosperity before we close. And I affirm by state, stating, the law makes my way prosperous. The universal principles make my way prosperous, and I have continued success in all I endeavor to do. That's Joshua 1 and 8. And after I affirm that, then I go into my affirming meditation. I now give a pattern of success and prosperity to the deeper mind that dwells in within me, which is the law. I now identify myself with the infinite source of supply. I listen to the still small voice of source within me. This inner voice leads, guides, and governs all my activities. I am one with the abundance of source. I know and believe that there are new and better ways of conducting my business, which is source's business. Infinite intelligence reveals the new ways to me continuously. 
I am growing in wisdom and understanding. My business is source business. I am divinely prospered in all the ways. Divine wisdom within me reveals the ways and means by which all my affairs are adjusted in the right way immediately. The words of faith and conviction that I now speak open up all the necessary doors or avenues for my continued success or prosperity. I know the law is, I know the law perfects that which pertains to me. That Psalms 138 and 8. My feet are kept in a perfect path because I am one with a living, loving creation, creator, and universe. And so it is. Amen. Well, I hope something has been said that's uplifting and encouraging. I can't stick around today. We can't go into the green room, but I do want to say this. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to be a blessing to it, take right action, inspired action, timely action. Go to the website, www.oasisspiritualcenter.com. Go over to the giving tab. Look down in the giving tab, find the platform that fits the way in which you transmute what you have over into the ministry. And I say thank you. If you're on YouTube, you can go into the subscribe button at the top. Next to it, there is a donate button and you'll make a donate donation to a secure place. So I thank you all for your time. My time is spent. Be blessed. Practice the principles. Consider the seven distinctives and it'll give you distinction. I'm out. Have a wonderful day.